Critical Path Method or CPM exercise. We have seen the critical path method during our previous lecture. In this lecture, we will go through the activity list you see in this figure, define the relationship of activities, create the network schedule, determine the critical path, and calculate the floats of two activities. As you see on the screen, there are eight activities in the project, and these are Activity A and its successor, F. Its duration is six days. This means Activity A will be followed by Activity F. Activity B does not have any successor, and its duration is five days. Activity C has not any successor as well, and its duration is eight days. Activity D is followed by activity E and F, and its duration is four days. Activity E is followed by activity G, and its duration is eight days. Activity F has two successors, B and G, and its duration is seven days. Activity G has one successor, which is activity H, and its duration is five days. And finally, the last activity, activity H, is followed by activity C, and it takes seven days. Here in this exercise, we will find the critical path of the project and float of activities E and F. In order to find the critical path, first we will draw the network diagram. Then we will define each possible path in this network diagram from the start of the project till the end. And then we will define the longest path in this network diagram, which will give us the critical path. And after finding the critical path, we will find the float of activities E and F respectively. In order to draw the network diagram, first we will define the relationships of each activity. The first row says that activity A is followed by activity F, and its duration is six days. To draw this relationship, as you see, A is followed by activity F. We define a finish to start relationship. And also we reflect the duration of activity on the F side of the arrow. Similarly, we have to define activity B's relationship. Since it has not any successors, it must be one of the latest activities in the project, and the project should end after these activities. Similarly, activity C is also the last activity of the project, and its duration is eight days. And for activity D, it's followed by two activities, activity E and F, and its duration is four days. Here we draw the relationship of these three activities as you see on the screen. Now we will draw the relationship of the last four activities. First, we draw the relationship of activity E and G, as you see on the screen. Activity E is followed by activity G, and its duration is eight days. Activity F has two successors, B and G, and activity F's duration is seven days. Activity G is followed by activity H, and its duration is five days. And finally, activity H has a successor, activity C, and its duration is seven days. We have completed to define the interrelationship of eight activities. The next step is connecting these relationships with each other to construct the overall network diagram of the project. And once it is done, you will reach this network diagram. As you see, it includes all activities, duration of activities, and relationship of activities from start of the project till the end. It also includes all possible activity paths from start till end of the project to complete the project. We will go over these paths one by one now to identify the critical path of the project. This is our first path. As you see, the green sketch shows our first path from beginning of the network diagram till the end. Activities of this path one are D, E, G, H, and C, respectively. 
And now, if we calculate the duration of each activity in this green path, it gives the path duration as 32 days. And the second path is this one. And in this path too, we have activities D, F, G, H, and C respectively. And if we calculate the durations of the activities in this path, we will have 31 days as the duration of path two. And the next path is this yellow path. And in this path, we have activity A, F, G, H, and C respectively. When we aggregated the durations of each activity in this path 3, we find the duration of path 3 as 33 days. And the last other possible path from beginning of the network diagram till the end is path 4, which is the purple path. And in this path, we have three activities, which are A, F, and B respectively. When we sum up the activity durations in this purple path, we find the duration of path 4 as 18 days. As you see here, over the four possible paths, from the beginning of the network diagram till the end, the longest path is path 3. Therefore, path 3 is the critical path of this network diagram. In other words, this project can be completed in 33 days. Since activities A, F, G, H, and C are on the critical path, any delay on these tasks will have direct impact on the project duration. Therefore, these critical path tasks have zero float. Now we will calculate the float of activity E. And here, if you remind the calculation of float, when we were calculating the early start and early finish values, we were moving from start point to the end point of a network diagram. And when we were calculating the late start and late finish values, we were starting from the end point of the network diagram and moving towards the start point of the network diagram. Now we will calculate the float of activity E. We will use late finish and early finish values to calculate the float. And in order to calculate early finish, I will start from the beginning of the network diagram and sum up the activity durations till activity E is completed. In order to finish activity E, activity D must be finished first, and then activity E must be completed. So the earliest finish duration for activity E is 12 days. And in order to calculate late finish, we will start from the end point of the network diagram and subtract the activity durations till the end of activity E. In order to finish the project, activity G, H, and C must be finished after activity E. When we subtract the duration of these activities from the project duration, which is 33 days, we will find the late finish value of activity E as 13 days. In other words, in order to complete the project on time, activity E must have been finished 13 days before the project completion date. Now we have late finish and early finish values for activity E. If we substitute these values in the formula, the float of activity E will be found as one day. This means, Activity E can be delayed only for one day without affecting the project duration. During this lecture, we have seen creation of network diagram over an activity list, defining relationship of activities, creation of network diagram, determining critical path, and calculation of float over a sample project scenario. During the next lecture, we will go over important notes about the critical path method.